Hi, Sam and Kate. Welcome to Crushing On. Um, lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. We're excited to be here. So um, your film, Do Your Worst, just came out. How are you feeling? Any one of you can go first. Sam, you want to go? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, no, I'm super excited. I've, I've really been enjoying seeing how the film is resonating with people um, and just the little bits of interaction that we've been able to have with audience members have been really, really fun. Uh, also, I'm really relieved that it's out now and I don't have to stress about it coming out <laughs> anymore because that was actually kind of a downer. And you, Kate? Super happy. Just the audience response has been out of this world. It's really, it's really been amazing. Every time I open my Instagram or my WhatsApp, there's um, another gift, a gift, a gift, a, the gift <laughs> of the gift, another gif or an LOL or some amazing meme about how much someone's enjoyed it and how much they love it and how much they laughed and they needed it. And it's just, it's been really, really refreshing. Mm. Yeah. Just amazing amount of love from, from an amazing amount of friends and total strangers. Yeah. It's a very memeable movie. And like that's very it is that that was in the design of it guys <laughs> i was like part of us were like there's some good gifts in this movie like i'm yeah. I, I'm, I'm i love it as a movie and i love i love thinking about it as a whole and a narrative whole but i was also like we gotta make some gifts <laughs> so so tell us about the film and why you wanted to get involved in it um you can start again with you sam sure um uh i I mean, I it was it came out of a long relationship with uh, Bongi Wasilani, our producer. So she and I have known each other for a very long time, and have been financing another project together that I'd written. Um, and you know, as financing goes, six seven years down the line, we still haven't made that movie, but it'll mm. come one day. Yeah. Um, and and she she had found the script through Zoe Laban through our writer, and sort of was like, oh, you know, I know you don't you, rom coms not really your thing, but would you be interested? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I would be interested. I, I would like to do that. Um, but but it was also just like reading Zoe's script and like seeing the potential after talking to them for like the tone we wanted to take it to, which was like I haven't seen a sort of like grounded South African comedy like where mm. where I'm like I'm laughing, but I feel for each of those people. I I feel their realness. I feel their pain as well as like I'm laughing. Um, and so that was what excited me. And and also just to to get this like beautiful opportunity for like messy characters mm. not clowns but like real messy characters that was that's what excited me and you Kate um I, I mean it was it was a crazy journey and uh, Shannon touched on this actually when she was doing a um Jacaranda interview because both Shannon and I auditioned for Sandra the the, mm. the lead to begin with that's you know that's who we went for and then the callback was us auditioning with a whole lot of other people for both roles right. we were both auditioning for Sandra and then we were also auditioning for for Carla and I remember sitting outside uh, the audition room with 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 Shannon. She was like, "Who who do you feel like more attached to?" So I was like, uh, "Sandra, definitely." She's like, "Yeah, me too." It's like I really don't like Carla. She was like, "Yeah, me either." And then and then two days later, I got the email. Sam would uh, like to offer you the role of Carla. I was like, "Carla, <laughs> Carla, <laughs> Sandra, this is all wrong." And then I was like, "No, no." she's clever so she must know something let me think of this. <laughs> so then I just kept rereading and reading the script and I was like there's gotta be because on the page she can come she comes across as just like a bird of a cow you know mm. and, and she's not likable so I was like but we've got to make her real so I just started investing in her and then I just started loving her and you know as an actor it's like this thing where you, once you get over the hurdle of like of of characters who don't do nice things mm. you know and like getting over the human side of of these terrible things they do you get into this childlike space where you're like I get to act like complete and utter mess and mm. just set fire to things this is like everyone's dream you know like the interior monologue of what they wish they could do in real life 
I, you get to do. And then you just embrace it and you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. So then you just have fun with it. Um, and so that was kind of, kind of my journey. And then just, I loved it. It was cast so well by Sam. Um, Shannon and I just really get each other. We're very different as actresses, but it really works on screen because I think we're so mm. different bring different feels to things and you know just working with a fantastic professional team who was just there and on it and it was great so we we just had a lot of fun yeah I want I wanted to ask you about you know your relationship with Shannon because your your chemistry in the film seems like you guys have been like best for, like I believed you guys were best friends since drama school or whatever but um <laughs> so so like were you guys I mean I know the industry is small but I mean do you guys know each other well, we did we did a big series called still breathing yes. where, yeah. where we we had to play best friends which she also had a thing with my husband like well, I just <laughs> don't it's spoil it I don't like there's something about Shannon and my husband um <laughs> that I need to take up with her <laughs> we'll see what the next film or series is um but no so so I think still breathing because it was such an intimate process you, you we bonded very very quickly um and I think I think Shannon and I we get along really well but we also have the utmost respect for each other mm. um and so it's about kind of just just bringing it, you know, every day and and meeting each other there and knowing what you're doing and embracing it. And, and you know, it's like, um, it, there's a lot of like ugly in this. And it's, so it's nice mm -hmm. to like, you know, in, in acting, everyone's like, oh, it's so glamorous and so nice. But there was, there was very little that was glamorous about this. Mm -hmm. You know, you either, I was either drunk or hungover <laughs> in, in all, of, all of the scenes. <laughs> Um, Carla's two speeds. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, um, so you you're playing you're playing ugly all the time. So it's nice to like have a person there who's also playing ugly with you, mm. and you, you get to like between the takes, you're just looking at each other, being like, "God, we look terrible," and you can laugh and you can play with it, and it's it just makes the world of difference where you've got like someone in the trenches with you. You mm. know, obviously Sam's there, but Sam's just like trying to juggle all these balls and then Sa Shannon and I they're kind of like holding each other's hand and supporting each other so you do you become it's 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 real you know you don't you don't really have to mm. fake it because you're 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 in it and and you're with someone who's who's raising the bar so you raise the bar and, and it's like it's really rad you know it's like playing tennis with someone who's better than you you will play better if you play with someone mm. who's not as good you won't play as well and it's the same with acting when you when you act with actors who are, are professional and amazing at what they do it immediately ups your game um so yeah it was really it was really lovely so on to the next <laughs> we'll have to do it yeah, yeah the, the <laughs> good one where... new husbands <laughs> you sleep with no husband or oh, whatever <laughs> <laughs> some payback time mm -hmm. <laughs> But watching this, like, you know, as a woman in her 30s, like, I was like, you know, I see so much of myself and my relationships with friends through this because, you know, we have these messy moments which often aren't shown. So, I mean, Sam, with you directing, did you have to take, did you take inspiration from emotions that you felt in friendships? And yeah, and same with you, Kate, did you take inspiration from, from your yeah. friendships? No, I sorry. I'll I'll jump in first. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh, I for me, absolutely. It's like I I went to drama school. Like I I, mm. I like I've lived this life. I mean, I was never an actor. I I was only I had to do performance, which everyone will tell you was the bane of my existence. But like it gave me an insight into the vulnerability of that mm. space. And then obviously just building on like the female friendships that I've had since, which as with any human relationship can run the gamut of like functional and loving and, you know, and all of those things to completely and utterly toxic. And even though you love X person, there are, there's like years of baggage. And I think for me, it was, it was very much about resonating on real relationships I've either observed or been a part of, mm -hmm. but also about saying, Hey, like, I know we're always privileging the romantic in our storylines, but like the the real marriage of the film, the real kind of relationship of our film is is the friendship. 
that's mm -hmm. the one we want to say this is the most important relationship and it's as valuable and as as like real and emotive and meaningful as the marriages in the film mm. and you Kate um yeah I mean it, it is so fascinating because female relationships are are complex you know mm. people talk about sisters or best friends or these sort of things and 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 what was very important to us was that that it would it felt real because because they do such terrible things that that if you don't believe in the love between these two women and the friendship between these two women then you won't care you yeah. know whether they whether they make it up or or that or you won't believe that they would forgive each other or you know so it's it's very important to kind of inform that and so i think you know it, it's lovely to do a film about about sisterhood and about the complexities and about women making terrible mistakes mm. like it, it, it's it seems in films to be um like a, a masculine trait and and acceptable as a masculine trait to mm. to do terrible things and make terrible mistakes or you get like the Melissa McCarthy of the film who like is just all over the place you know what I mean it's like it's yeah. one character's kind of there's there's a there's a comedic character who makes all these mistakes but to have two leads who are who are intrinsically doing terribly thing terrible things as women I find just so refreshing mm, sure. because it's like it's the good the bad and the ugly and it's 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 yeah it, it's 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 just refreshing I think that's the word for me it's like it's nice to see these things and these crazy wonderful often real stories played out um yeah, for us I actually also just want to take the baton on something you said because I think it was really important for me coming into it as well as like it's like you do get this sort of Melissa McCarthy kind of character which is which is great I mean she's incredibly talented yeah. But but it's almost started to feel for me like watching a bunch of these films in prep and preparing for this is that like somehow we had to have the okay woman so you could validate having the messy mm. woman. Yeah. And I was just like, nah, there is no like we're all a mess in this film. Exactly. Let's, let's, yeah, it's cool. That's you know? realistic also. Because mm. we all make messy decisions. Totally. And we in, in, in guy movies, all of them are, are a hot mess. And yeah. somehow we're like that's that's fine and that's normal. But but when there's a bunch of women who are are messy, it's like okay, but but they they need to normally be yeah. fine, mm. and they make one mistake. But now yeah. it's like no no no, they're just mm -hmm. a hot mess, and they just keep on making mistakes. And that's it's interesting. It's like oh okay cool, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but. You know, talking about like the whole refreshing thing, what was also like like a like a breath of fresh air for me is to see sex being talked about like so positively and openly in a South African film about women. Mm. Because yeah. I hardly ever see that. Like, you know, if it, unless it's like a negative storyline. Like it's just mm. it was just so fun. Because I mean, that's the way we talk with our friends. Like <laughs> just yeah. to see that. So um well, I don't have a question of that, but like, was that something they found new for the two of you as well? I, 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 again, I, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna because I think you have such a great read on the film. It's like mm -hmm. it is all these little things that we sort of laid out there and like made decisions early on, and like that decision predates me. That comes from Zoe with the script and like mm -hmm. wanting to be like, I want these women to feel like the women I know. I want the stories they tell to feel like stories I've heard. I want all of that to happen, and it was just like continual like just like picking up that little breadcrumb and saying like I'm gonna carry on with this trail I want at no point in this film for us to feel bad that they have sexual desires sexual wants sexual mm. feelings like that they that they can navigate and decide like in the same way a man can because of desire and there is no moral judgment on that because mm. I don't place moral judgment on that I don't think I don't think any of my friends do um but we we are as women often taught to like moralize around our own sexuality and so so for you know like the film the film is breaking boundaries in small ways it's still a commercial vehicle it's still a rom-com that fits into a genre but every area that we could push it we we were we were very consciously trying to do that mm. um so yeah so okay going on to that like um, there's a lot of emphasis on us in like normal as women to like find ourselves in our twenties and to come into our thirties like fully formed. 
But like, how do you feel that the film depicts how for most of us self-discovery comes later in life? I don't know if either, which one of you want to take that one? I'll start. Yeah. Um, I just find the older I get, the better I feel about mm. everything. Like I was, I, I spent my twenties apologizing for everything, like mm. for being me, for saying things, for doing things in my whole life was like, oh, excuse me. Oh, well, sorry. And then, then when I hit 30 and then it's just like this age, this age is shaming thing. It's like big 30. It's like, no, 30 is mm. just so young. You still don't know anything. But, but you finding your voice a little bit more and you're apologizing a little bit less. And I was like, oh, this is so much better. It's so much nicer. You still make mistakes and then you're approaching 40 and it's just your, your voice is louder, but you have a bit more wisdom. And I just think that getting older is just fantastic, mm. you know? And I think it, it's so nice to, to, to have films that, that are looking at this age because things you know, women aren't having kids early on anymore. Women, you know what I mean? It's, it's 40 is in many ways the, the new 30, um, but it's all different phases of life. And it's just wonderful to, to explore them all and to kind of celebrate them all in a way that like has nothing to do with, with a frame being put around mm. that age. Cause what yeah. does 40 mean? Exactly. Yeah, that's my view, Sam. <laughs> Say something better. Uh, uh, no, all of those things are correct. I have nothing. No, but uh, but no, it's it's the same. It's like the older the older I get, the more confidence I have, and because of the the more you know time I've had to kind of like realize that my opinion is valid and and a, and a good divining rod for my sort of like way in the world. Um, and then, but then you know, sort of cinematically and narratively. Uh, I apparently should be dead by now because women only exist under 30 and uh, and who cares? Um, which is a thing that's improved drastically over the last 15 years. Like there are many more stories like this, but I, I haven't seen a lot of them here. And, and that, again, that's where we're coming from. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like, you know, we, we want something that is resonating with audiences. We want something that feels accessible, but we want just, just to twist it a little bit. So you have never seen it before in our context. Mm. so what advice would you guys give to to our listeners that might be going through a friendship breakup oh god they should never take advice from us <laughs> <laughs> watch don't your sleep um... don't sleep with your friends boy, with your friends husband. Yeah. do your work will make you feel better about your life <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's an extra add-on that we don't speak about but it will make you feel fantastic about your life choices and your yeah. life <laughs> Nine out of ten therapists recommend watching the worst for a good dose of Schadenfreude. Uh, I, I think the big lesson of the film for me, just to answer it seriously, mm -hmm. is like, it's like I think, I think what changes for these women is when, when they really are truthful with each other. That's mm -hmm. when, when they're able to find a way back to the the real kind of nugget of their friendship, the real meaningful element. And I think you know we're, uh, again to generalize, but like women are taught to deal with conflict very differently to how men deal with conflict and, and a lot of the ways we deal with conflict involves like long drawn out like not telling our friends not mm. being comfortable to go towards the conflict and what's mm. great about this film is like it leads up to an explosion that sort of allows them to then rebuild and that in some ways having those conflicts like having them openly telling someone what you feel and what's not working for you is the best way to kind of fix something mm. What Sam said. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just, yeah, it is exactly that. It's it's a case in point of a small thing bubbling over like 15 years mm. for these two women. And then it it just crescendos. And it is, it's it is so important for us as as human beings to just in a in a more in a safe space kind of scenario is just to to say how you feel or how things make you feel um and that to be okay you know mm. it's okay not to like something what's okay to be hurt by something yeah. that's how you feel but it's you know towards a, a resolution and women are awesome i don't know what i would do without my female friends honestly mm. we're rad 
and this Pretty film cool. is great. You should watch it. If you you should. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so my final question is the question we ask everybody, but um, who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, man. Okay, you go first. I mean, I'm going way back. It was probably like MacGyver. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, he was like the only other guy that I knew um, <laughs> outside of my dad when I was like seven. Um, I don't know. Celebrity crush? MacGyver's an answer. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I that was, that was my first celebrity crush. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. It, it, yeah, it's it a practical a choice. Yeah. A, yeah. Well, he's a very useful person. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I guess probably Buffy the Vampire Slayer for me. Mm. I was, I was yeah. like, yes, I, I would need a strong female character who's also going to slay vampires. That is, that works for me. <laughs> perfect perfect i love buffy um yeah. thank you so much for joining us this was such a lovely chat um everybody needs to watch do your worst on netflix right now um thank you so much sam and kate <laughs>